Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to DNews Plus again today. I am Trace, as you might have known already. This week we're talking about supermassive black holes and it's a little different episode this week than it has been in the past. We scored an interview with a black hole hunter named Chung Pei Ma. She's a cosmologist and astrophysicist from the University of California, Berkeley, across the bay from us. And I say black hole hunter because that's what she does. She looks for black holes and some of the biggest ones in the universe. It's super cool. She and her team recently found a black hole so massive it is 17 billion times more massive than our sun. That's big, that's real big. So yesterday we talked about how big these things are and how they get that way. Today we're gonna get into things like gravitational lensing and the event horizon of black holes, which is super awesome. We're also gonna talk about how that relates to dark matter and dark energy, because you'd be surprised. I was reading something about kind of mid-size black holes, kind of somewhere in the middle. Would a supermassive black hole that's, you know, 17 billion stellar masses and then some that are only millions of stellar masses, it does seem like that there would be something kind of in the middle, uh, just a smaller supermassive black hole. Yes. So uh, as we discover more, how do we how do we determine all of these different things? Like, how do we determine the mass of a black hole? Is it just looking at the event horizon, or? Exactly, uh, that's, that's a good, good, very very important question, given that black holes themselves can't be seen. Right. Right, so how do we even infer its mass? And absolutely, you're right that there is a, a continuum of uh, mass from the Milky Way up to what we see, you know, we know at least 80 to 100 out there uh, nearby. So the way we, uh, measure the black hole's mass is by using obviously luminous things mm -hmm. we can see with telescopes. Yeah. In this case, uh, these will be stars. So, but you need to look at stars that are orbiting very close to the hole. As I said, at our distance from our galaxy, the center is so far, we don't care about the black hole. Yeah. So you need to have fantastic telescopes with very sharp eyes yeah. that can pierce towards the very center of a very distant galaxy. And then we take spectra. So we disperse light as a function of you know, wavelength, like a rainbow. Uh, and the spectra allow us to measure the, how fast these stars are orbiting about the black hole. Mm -hmm. And of course, um, the more massive the black hole is, the stronger the gravity it is uh, on these stars. So we can use that information to model, to infer, co compute what the black hole uh, mass is. Why is it that black holes are more rare than stars? I mean, stars are everywhere, and if, if supermassive stars become black holes, why would, don't we see more of them? Right, so again, uh, because not every star will die as a black hole, and very importantly, there are fewer massive stars than little suns. There are mm -hmm. many, many things like our sun, sun out there, many stars, but massive things are rare. Okay. So in that sense, both stellar mass black holes and these 17 billion solar mass black holes are quite rare. Yeah, and so what makes them so important to study? You know, what are the characteristics of that versus something that would be, I guess, a smaller supermassive black hole? Although we shouldn't get too scared by it, uh, there is this very definite region in space around a black hole, it's called event horizon. Yeah. And that is a artificial boundary, it's not some surface you can touch, okay? right. but it's just a radius. So within that radius, light, even light cannot escape. Therefore, a black hole is black, as I said earlier. And the bigger the black hole is, the larger the event horizon. Mm -hmm. So for a 17 billion solar mass black hole, uh, the size of the event horizon is about the eight times the uh, Pluto's orbit. Oh, man. So another way to think of it is if we were to put this giant black hole at where the sun is, yeah. you would not want to get close to within eight times Pluto's orbit. So if wow. we, you were at Earth's radi ra radius, uh, we would be, it would be pretty, pretty baffing. Yeah, it'd yeah. be crunchy. Crunchy. Yeah. <laughs> what can we learn from trying to look at black holes? In terms of the supermassive black holes, as we talked about, they co-evolve with a galaxy, its host galaxy. And galaxies are the building blocks of the universe. I mean, universe is made of many, many galaxies, and each galaxy is made of many, many stars, and at the center there's a supermassive black hole. And one of uh, our astronomers, uh, astrophysicists, you know, interest or goals is to understand how the universe evolved from its youth, infancy really, uh, through youth and until today, 
it's 17.8 billion years old. How did galaxies come about, as you asked? How, how did these black holes become 17 billion suns? It, yeah. it wasn't born that way. So by studying this c connection between black holes and galaxies and how galaxies uh, cluster, you know, distributed in space, it allowed us to understand what the universe is, is actually made of. Mm -hmm. Dark matter, dark energy, and, and basically the entire history of the, the universe. So I like that you mentioned dark matter and dark energy, because a lot of times people mention black holes, dark matter, dark energy, and go, well, aren't they all related? They're all they're all dark, dark right? Yes. But it's like, but can you just give us a quick rundown of, of how you see these things in, in, in the universe and what we can do with that information, like learning more about them? Sure, yes. Yeah. So our universe is a very bizarre one in the sense that the things you and I are made of, um, you know, the periodic table, atoms, protons, neutrons, electrons, they're so precious, right? This is how, how life is made. Uh, but it consists of only 4% of the energy mass budget of the universe. Oh, man. Another way to put it is 96% of the mass in the universe appear to be in the form of dark matter and dark energy, stuff that does not give out electromagnetic light, like the light in this room. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really curious, why? Yeah. Okay, why 4% versus 96% of something we don't seem to need? Now black holes, on the other hand, since they are the end state of stars or uh, collapse of gas, you know, it's, it's the gas that's feeding the black hole, they count towards that 4% okay. of the budget. Okay, so black holes, even supermassive ones, are essentially kind of the same as us, whereas dark matter and dark energy is apart from us. There's something exactly. else. What about something like gravitational lensing? We've talked a little bit about that on our show and about mm -hmm. how we can infer a black hole is in an area because it, it curves the space around it. Can you talk a little bit about how that's valuable? Like, what, what can we learn from looking at something like, how does gravity move stuff around like that? Yeah, yeah I mean, gravity is incredible in the sense we learn gravity as forces in, in school, yeah. right? Um, two masses attract each other with a force. In fact, another way to view gravity is to forget about force. Okay. Okay, but think about curvature. Gravity really is curvature in space time. So, so no force acting on anyone, except uh, the, the, the space time is, is curved, so it may not be flat like a piece of paper, but rather like the surface of a ball in a two dimensional analogy. Uh, so gravity curves space, then particles, or you or I, uh, how we travel will be we just follow the shortest path. Mm. But the rule of the game is you follow the path, shortest path in this curved space, and how the space is curved depends on the black hole mass and so on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can, so in that way, the curvature of space time, um, photons, light, follows that curvature too. Okay. And because of that, uh, we get this gravitational lensing, you know, the French call it the gravitational uh, mirage. You see things where it shouldn't be. Right. But that's a very powerful probe of what's bending the light because it's the black hole or dark matter or something at the center that's causing the space time to curve. Guys, black holes are just the coolest. Remember, this is only part two of three, so there is definitely more to come. Make sure you subscribe. Let us know down in the comments if we should have any other scientists on the show, people that you think we should reach out to, or if you know a scientist that we should have on our show, hook us up. Let us know who they are down in the comments or send a tweet. You can find me at Trace Dominguez. Tomorrow we're gonna talk about what we get wrong about black holes and how they're actually really simple. And also how the universe is gonna end. You know, she's got that figured out. So make sure you come back, subscribe, and we'll see you tomorrow for the last episode in this short series of supermassive black holes.